How does it hang, y'all? Welcome back to the worm. Good morning. <laughs> it's actually kind of late morning. Went outside for a little bit. I'm, I'm uh, kind of over the French toast thing. I'm on to more of a three poached eggs and four pieces of toast breakfast these days, but I was outside and it was just way too cold, so I came right back in here. Eh, it's up to 15 now, but I'm still not going to do it. I like cooking all my meals outside just because, you know, now that I got a cabin, it actually gets me outside multiple times a day if I'm just working on stuff in here. But I do keep a backup breakfast just in case I don't want to go out first thing in the morning. So we're going to do granola and some fruit. This place is way too stinking full. I still haven't done anything with my shower water. I've got about half of my water in here and half out in the shower because the temperatures keep getting above freezing and below. And it's totally fine to use buckets of water for showering that are partially frozen. It's when they get to be a solid block, I can't really work with them. And the most frozen they've gotten so far is about halfway. You know, you get like a, a liner of the bucket of ice that's maybe two inches thick. You dump the water out of the middle and then you can break up the rest of it and put it in the pot. But pretty quick, all my water is going to have to be in here. You guys probably remember it all goes underneath my bunk. That's kind of how I built it, the right height and size to get all my water out of the way. The other issue is, if you guys saw the last, uh, I don't know, was it the last video? Made this little like roller dolly for my big fat cooler because this time of year, like right now, it was 12 degrees when I got up. My coolers have to be inside. They still have ice in them. And then pretty quick here, I'll be able to put them outside for the day. Just makes my ice last basically forever. But when the coolers are in here, I've got all my sewing stuff in here for today's project. I got my water in here. It's just, it's way too full. I can hardly move around. I was trying to think what to use to put on the floor underneath the bunk to keep the sometimes sweaty buckets from ruining the floor. In my mind, probably the best thing to use would be like a big sheet of, a thin sheet of stainless steel. Somehow like bend the edges up like a pan. You know, but out here I don't really have access to that kind of stuff. So I got a four pack of fruit roll, we always call them fruit roll up sleds when we were kids. You know, it's just a sheet of plastic, thin plastic that had a couple holes cut out of the front you hold on to. And I think if I can figure out how to attach all four of them together, it'll be just the right size for under the bed. That's why I brought the sewing stuff here. Can you sew sleds? So I'm going to have some breakfast and we'll go find, I think the sleds are out in the man cave and we'll uh, set up a table in here and we'll just see what happens. Ooh, yeah, look at all the water. Oh well. Yeah, there's just, there's just too much garbage in here for such a small place. You know, I gotta say though, 200 or whatever it is, 190 square feet is way plenty enough for one person to live in. If I wasn't into building stuff and didn't need the tools, this would be enough space. But of course, you know, we got the lean-to in the man cave because I've got quite a collection of tools to be able to build all this stuff. You just, you know, you just gotta keep your food and your sewing machines outside. been sampling some granolas lately. This one is by far my favorite. Almond butter clusters, 10 grams of protein. I mean, it's no poached eggs outside on a cold winter's morn, but pretty good with some strawberries. See if we can find them sleds. The door was a mite bit frozen. Uh, hmm. Anybody? Aha! Kind of hard to believe that that is four sleds in that little package. It is kind of pretty out here right now. A little nippy, but nice and calm. It has been so windy the last, I think the last 48 hours or so. There were trees coming down all over the place. I pretty much didn't come outside. Oh, gotta get our sewing table too. 
This would seem like a great project to do in the man cave with the heater on in there, but it's just not quite enough space. That fold-out table is just a little bit too big. Uh, this was frozen to the mud too. Ooh, that's that's frozen. A couple days of snotty rain and then uh, 20 degree drop in temperature. Well, I'd say if there's a chance we're gonna be able to sew these together without them breaking, we're gonna have to heat them up a bit. It's a good thing we have a microwave here. Probably melt them. Guess we might as well measure under here one more time. Cleaned out a bunch of my bins. Pretty much empty now. So we can fit water down to one bin of clothes. That's nice. Well, I've got more clothes out there underneath my tent deck. You know, I guess you could say it's cold out there, but it's really only cold by comparison. It's freaking roasty toasty 65 in here. Makes it feel awfully freezing, but 19 degrees is not that bad. seven to right there one thing I'm thinking about is where these pieces of plastic are sewn together and overlapped I don't really want water running underneath them we might have to sew something in between some kind of gasket or something I mean it's not a ton of water that comes off the buckets but generally comes down and sits underneath there because there's no way for it to dry out still we could even wrap the sled up the back wall and put some snaps in there or something. Maybe we'll sew it all together, put it on there and under there and just see how it looks. And anything that runs out the front or the side I can see. I, I could always throw it on a towel. I don't think it's going to get that bad though. these being way bigger. I'm absolutely confident that this is not what I ordered. It is often such a pain in the butt to get to order stuff online and get it out here. I often don't like to do it because it takes weeks or sometimes over a month and it involves meeting other people to hand stuff off. I waited a long time for these sleds and they're not what the description said. I just measured them and then looked it up to see what I ordered and they changed it. <laughs> the pictures are different and the sizes are different and there's no way for me to send them back. My thought was to cut this off. So two of them like this, two of them like this, and then it would fill the entire bottom of the bed. But it looks like they're gonna have to go all four this direction. And I've got two ideas for stopping leaks in between sewn edges. You guys have seen me use this a whole bunch of times. It's just double-sided tape made for fabric, made for canvas. But on canvas also, when your needle goes through this, it kind of waterproofs that seam. I don't know if it'll work on here. Oh, it does actually stick. The other option is I have a piece of one of my old triathlon wetsuits. When it got too old, I had to chuck it. I just kept one chunk of the wetsuit because you never know when you're gonna want a little piece of neoprene to sew something together, right? Right? You know, see, you know where I'm coming from. So we could cut some strips out of here, overlap it, put the next sled there, sew through it. It would make a little bit of an edge, be kind of hard to get the buckets over, but I think they're mostly going to get slid in that way. Well, let's cut the handles off of here and we'll use a piece of that to test it out. I 
try to sew pretty much everything like this with polyester thread because it's the easiest to use. I do have some of this uh, PTFE thread. It's really weird stuff. It's kind of a pain to sew with. If you're going to leave something out in the sun for a long time or you're going to get, I don't know, chemicals, cleaners, bleach, that kind of thing on it, this stuff will last way outlast that stuff. The only thing this is going to get is abrasion, but it's not like I'm going to be stuffing buckets under there, you know, five times a day. It'll be maybe once, once every week or two weeks a bucket will go in and out. Probably it won't run too much over the seam, so I'm not going to use this stuff. Also, this is like the common thread stand where you're pulling thread off the top of the spool and it's coming off in a spiral, which kind of makes it wrap as it goes into the machine. But this stuff, it's not too bad. With that PTFE, you almost have to put it on a thread stand that holds it sideways so it unrolls like this and you don't get that twist coming off. And I can't find the thread stand I made for that, that kind of thread anyway, so we're going with this. If the thread wears out, we'll just restitch it with the other stuff, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Where's our power? Oh yeah, gotta push the button. Definitely no problem stitching it. I didn't think there would be. You know, with that tape in there, I don't think anything's going to go through it. I mean, that is securely taped inside there. Will it go through the holes, I wonder? It'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. It's pretty awesome to sew through something like that, a couple layers of plastic with just a small machine. In fact, you know what we should do? I wonder how many layers of this that thing will sew through. Let's see if it'll go through. Let's try eight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get these to stay in there. They're pretty slicker, slickery. Just barely fits. This is a dull needle too. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's dumb. I'm probably going to break something. Yeah, no problem. Doesn't even slow down. Told you it was going to be fine. You don't have to worry. I never break stuff. Hold down. Hmm. Well, let's put these back in the oven. Let's do two stitches down here just to make it nice and tough. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Yes, you can sew sleds, and I think that'll be pretty robust. Of course, it would be far better if you could just buy one large piece of plastic, but I don't got the hookup for that kind of stuff out here. table so you can't sit in front of the machine when you get way up to the side and it's kind of hard to keep scrolled up now the chair's in the way that's all right we all have problems i know we 
got my scissors. There they are. covers a bit of floor. It's better than nothing. It would be nice if this stuck out a few more inches. Actually, you know what would have been cool is if this came all the way out to here and the feet could have sat on it to hold it in place. I hate to give those bastards any more of my money since they sort of ripped me off, but I could do a strip down there and one more sled that way and then I'd still have two left over. If there was a little more snow right now, before we put this under here, I'd go take it for a spin down the hill. Ooh, look at that. That was easy. I like it, I like it. Weirdly, there's a slick side and a rough side, and I tested it, and the rough side's a lot slickerier. Yeah, that's gonna be great to just slide them in and out. Oh yeah, I forgot I was going to maybe pull that back side up there and snap it to the wall or something. Ah, do I want to do that? Probably should, except I'd lose another couple inches here. I should do it because it suck. And all these sweat and it runs off the back into the wall. There's that crack between the floorboards and the wall boards that goes right into the 2x4s and all that stuff. Uh, okay, we'll pull it back out. Look at that nothing one thing I really like about this this floor is that it's really slippery <laughs> it sure was a weird finish going on you guys remember all the layers and the sanding and scuffing and caulking and everything when I get water on it like when I bring in I fill up uh, you know a crate of one gallon water jugs like over there and just like the five gallon buckets, they're really cold and they start sweating on the floor. If the, if the water sits on there for a long time, it does turn the floor back white again, like that milk color. I mean, maybe that's just what you get with a water-based floor finish. I took my thumbnail and scraped where it was white and it didn't like come off or anything. I don't know, I'm happy with it. And I really like to be able to put socks on and slide around here. Yes, I'm a child, I know it. What's the minimum we could do? Maybe an inch and a half fold up the wall there. Sure we must have snaps in here. Or did I use it? Nope. I think I refilled my stash after the last thing we built. Screwing ones. And that one. Oh yeah. You know where I ran out of this stuff? Doing the uh, shower. Putting those big canvas panels on the side. Either like the male side of the snap. I screwed in, I don't know, at least a hundred of these guys into the wall. With a little uh, thread on it. Wood thread. That's where I used them all up and I had to use some of the machine ones with a nut on the back and just screwed it into the wood. And I guess someday we should go back out there and fix that, but it's not going to be today. Mm, that should work. Did I do it the right way? I did it the right way, don't worry. Had to go 
get me drill. You know, something I would like to do someday. You know, I've never built anything out here that I didn't make the lumber for myself. There's something I would like to build and I would consider using not my own lumber for it. I think it would be cool to have an actual workshop. I don't know, twice the size of this cabin or something, like four times the size of the man cave. Man cave would be cool to be able to work on chainsaws and stuff, although I guess you could do that in the shop. But rural Michigan has a lot of cool old unused barns that are kind of like caving in. And every time I drive by them or have driven by them for many years, I thought it'd be kind of cool to use the wood, take one of them apart, run all the wood through a planer just to kind of freshen it up and then build something out of it like a big old workshop. A normal person would make the plans for whatever they're building and they would go out and buy the lumber. I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to do that. I guess I can't say never, but something about building a shop in a week just seems like cheating to me. But I would consider taking apart an old barn and using that lumber. I suppose building something twice this big, twice as big as the cabin, would be about the same work again as building the cabin because you wouldn't have to have, you know, insulation and inside walls and hanging coffee tables and pull down movie theaters and stuff. If you were just building it like the man cave, making all the lumber yourself, it'd probably be a year and a half project. I don't know. I don't think I have the calories or the energy to do that again. Yeah, you know, just something to think about. Just, just a thought. <laughs> you know, I just remembered. <laughs> I didn't build this cabin square. I keep forgetting that every now and then. Remember this back wall? The foot didn't sit quite in the middle of that concrete pad, so I just extended it like four inches. So the corner back here is uh acute acute right it's not obtuse it's acute it'll still work perfect uh-oh uh-oh oh this barely fits yeah, this, this stuff is so stiff that if you're off by a millimeter, you won't be able to get the snap on there. That one's pretty close. It was worth the time, right? That's working great. Maybe two thirds at most are gonna have that plastic on it, which sucks, but that's still, I could probably still fit 10. Well, that's not bad. I think I've only got 16 buckets, so that's a start anyway. I don't know what it's like to be a normal person, but uh, I guess unless you leave stuff in your car overnight and you live in a cold place, you don't have this issue, but everything I bring in here just starts sweating. There's drops of water on the table just from that little piece of metal. And that there is why the snow sled was invented. You know, something I've been noticing in the last couple of weeks, the humidity is lower in here than it's ever been. It's down to almost 40 percent which is like winter humidity i think all the moisture is finally out of all the lumber i built with which is kind of crazy i wonder i would love to know how many gallons or how many pounds have come out of these walls there's got to be a lot of water if you haven't seen it and want to see how i invented this uh floor finish here it is. I'll throw it in the uh, description to the link. None of it was planned. It was sanded and then painted and then scrubbed down so some of the wood came through. Oh yeah, and then dry rolled with a different color of gray and then painted the cracks and then did all that uh, milk stuff on top of it. Remember after the first coat I put on, I was almost terrified at how ugly this green was. Holy cow. I hope this isn't overdoing it. I guess I could change the color. 
or just put a new wood floor over it so it don't doesn't over and then uh, it worked out great i love it now well i jammed my 3d printer back there let's see if there's still room for my yeah and do my clothes fit yes and we still have room for yeah probably four more buckets back there hey this worked out great i'm so i'm quite surprised and sweet mamma jamma it feels good to have some walk-in space in here well, when I woke up this morning, I didn't think I was making a video, but then I realized if I went and sewed a bunch of sleds together and didn't show some of you, you'd probably, you, you'd wonder, you know, how, why, why, Ryan, why would you do that? I notice it's not quite as light out as it was a half an hour ago, just about, I guess we just call it a day, you know, it's a little after three o'clock. I guess I could go fire up the stove and uh, take myself a shower and play guitar for six or seven hours. That sound pretty good? Actually, before I do that, you gotta light the stove, then you can come play guitar. I screwed up many times both ways. I both thought I lit the stove up, came in, played guitar, got all my stuff together, ran out there, cold water. I guess I dreamed that I turned it on. And then the other way around, I've, I've went and lit it up, come in here, completely forgot it was going. You know, play guitar for a couple hours, listen to some music. No, nah, nah, that's not true. I don't think it's been a couple hours. It's been over an hour, though. I've gone in there and the pot's boiled down about two inches. <laughs> all right, I'm going to do it the right way. Thanks, y'all, for watching. We've got a couple of options of what next week's video could be. As soon as I'm done showering, we'll have a look at the, the weather and see if we're going to get some kitchen time out there. Also trying to get a hold of Tito and Sarah. I think the last couple years we've gotten together well after the holidays and did our own holiday out here. Oh yeah, actually, was that last year that it was snowing really good and we all hung out in here? With any luck, that's what's going to happen. But who knows? Who knows? Hopefully they can both make it out in the next week or so. We have so much fun. Especially, I don't know why I say especially, but it feels like especially in winter, it's just... I don't know, it's a blast to have both of them here at the same time for several days where we don't have anything we have to do. Go trudging through this, well, not much snow now, but you never know. You never know what three days from now could bring. Hang out, play guitars, listen to music, eat great cheeses of Tito's there. So let's cross our fingers. Let's hope that it's a slightly toned down, shortened version of uh, Party Week for next Saturday's video. I'm just gonna take a look in here and see how many of these buckets I actually have. We got four full of ice and another three, which is actually just fine. We'll put four under the bed. That'll completely fill it up. And then the other three, I just keep full of ice, do halfsies, fill the bucket halfway up with water and then throw a bunch of ice cubes over top of it. Sheesh, we gotta get out of here. I don't know if it's true, but it feels to me like I've spent a lot of time with you guys in the shower lately. Hasn't it been like the last uh, couple videos we've been hanging out in there? It's too much. Too much. All right. Catch you next week. Thanks for watching. See, that's what I'm talking about. Just went in there and forgot to light the stove. What a dum-dum, you know?